Hey everyone, so I'm just getting some equipment prepped for some upcoming shoots at the end of the month. Don't have anything this week, so it gives me a little bit of a break and a little bit of a chance to dial some things in. I've been working on camera rigs, um, cable management is always a thing, um, but yeah, I've been working on cameras, and then I wanted to give you guys a look at the slider that I've been using. I've gotten like a bunch of comments asking what type of slider and do I like it and that sort of thing. So I'm going to do a breakdown real quick for you guys of the slider. So I'll get it set up and give you guys a look. This is the, the GVM slider. Um, I'm not even sure on the model number. It's kind of weird. They have a bunch of different variations of sliders, but this is the one that I have. It's the GVM Professional Brushless Two Axis Carbon Fiber Motorized Camera Slider. It's the WS2D80 and it's the 32 inch version. I think they have like a 48 inch version or something like that. But this is the one that I went with. I wanted a really portable slider. Um, so I went with the 32 inch version of this slider. And out of the box, um, I had to make a few modifications to it. Um, so it had this like center, let me stop the track here. It had this center column um, in the middle of the track here that was used for mounting like a tripod. So it has these tiny little holes where I removed the center uh, mount that you would connect, connect to like a traditional tripod. But the slider itself was pretty smooth, but every time, and this could have just been my unit, um, I bought it brand new from B&H, so hopefully it's not like this for everyone. But for me, every time it would pass that, that center mounting point, it would give a little jitter or a little bump. It was very subtle, but it was enough to really annoy me and make it not usable. That was kind of a deal breaker. I saw that and it had like little screws on the sides that you could take it off. And I knew I was going to mount it onto two tripods or two stands anyway. I wasn't really going to mount it on a single point on the tripod because I knew the camera package that I was going to use was going to be a little bit heavier than um, what would be able to support on a single tripod. Once it got to the end, it would probably be a little too heavy and start warping a little. After removing the, the center mounting point, it was uh, smooth. So it didn't have that, that bump in the middle anymore. So that kind of fixed the problem I was having. I decided to keep it because um, I loved everything else about it, just minus that bump in the middle. Um, but yeah, it came with this little tripod head, which was fine, but I needed a little bit bigger of a tripod. So I had a, a monopod a head that I wasn't really using, just a little Manfrotto one um, that threaded onto this guy the exact same way. So I decided to use this one instead of the stock one that it comes with. It uses um, two Sony MPF style batteries, one here on the controller and then one on the motorized head. So you have to have two batteries to power it. If you want that pan ability on the actual head itself um, to be able to pan left and right, like adding a, a, a parallax motion. Here's the actual menu. Actually, I'll start from the startup here. So let me turn it off. There's a power button right here. So once you turn it on, Sorry, it's kind of hard to do with one hand. It starts to calibrate. So you'll see it once it's turned on, it'll start moving from this end all the way down to this end. And I think that's how it actually calibrates. And then once it reaches this end, it gives you a quick start menu. 
I usually go to video. And then this is pretty much all the menu items I need. I want it to loop. And then you can change the speed. I find 30 works best for me if I'm using the full track. And then now you can start setting your in and out points. So once you find a point that you like, I'm just going to uh, select this camera. Wait for it to focus, put it kind of in the middle. Say I'm happy with that point. I'm gonna go ahead and set that to point B. You just click it until you see that B comes up right there. That's how you know it's set. And then you find your second angle. Let's say we wanted to track that camera the whole entire way. So I'm gonna get it down to the end of the track. Now I'm going to rotate it towards that camera until I'm happy with it. Okay, let's say that's the middle, give or take. Eh, let's go a little bit more. So right there. Then I would come over here and set point A. And this is the little joystick that you use to control left and right, and then the pan and the tilt. Uh, sorry, and then the left and right, and then pan left and right with that as well. So once you're happy, you go ahead and hit play, and then it will start. And I'll put this footage on later so you can look at it um, on a full screen, but it's pretty smooth out of the box. Obviously doing like a really close up of something like this, you see like every little jitter, but um, it's pretty smooth. I've tried a few different sliders, automated sliders, and I just was not happy with any of them. So I did the iFootage Shark Nano and I just could not get anything smooth out of that, even using a, you know, a camera inside its payload. So I think it was like nine pounds or 11 pounds or something like that. I would, you know, take off the battery, take off the monitor and just have bare bones camera. And it still was not smooth. It jittered a bunch. Um, I, I don't know if it was just my unit or if it was like a firmware issue. So I returned that one. Another thing I really liked about this slider was the payload. I want to say it was like one of the only automated sliders that had a decent payload. I think it was like 40 pounds or something. Let me see here. Yeah, so the the capacity, load capacity was is uh, 33 pounds. And that's using it horizontal. I guess you can use it incline and vertical. I've never done that. But the horizontal payload was 33 pounds. And for an automated slider, that's pretty good. You can definitely have a beefier camera on here, like a Ursa Mini or any variation of red to a certain extent. Um, and I've never seen the motors like struggle or anything like that. It always um, is really smooth. I use it with these, I bought these cheap small rig tripods off of like Amazon. They fold up really tiny and I'm able to fit everything in kind of this uh, Pelican case here. So I put the original JVM soft case that it came with. I put it inside the Pelican um, and then I'm able to fit the tripod stands along this way here. And then I can fit the video head right here and any other accessories um, I can fit in this case as well. Maybe some like 
NPF batteries can easily fit in there with the tripod head. So it's just one kind of package that has everything in it. it has the slider, tripods, head, all that. This is the mounting point. So uh, if you have any sort of head that has a, a three, four um, mounting point, you can do that on this tripod head. And you just have to click this little button so that this doesn't spin, so you can tighten it down. And it has little um, bubbles, which are nice. One thing I would say in general with sliders, especially automated ones, you kind of have to make sure it's leveled in multiple directions, not just on this axis, but sometimes the two tripods can get unleveled and then you start noticing your horizon start to shift a little bit from one end to the other. I've noticed that a few times where I would set headroom on point A and then by point B, there would be like way too much headroom. So one little cool thing about these tripods is they have little um, levels on the side. So before I start doing anything, I make sure they're both leveled in the middle. And on this side too, because if not, like I said, if it's like that, it might still be leveled here, but you'll start to notice it starts to drift on headroom if these sides are not leveled. So just a quick note, I, I think that's in general with any slider to make sure the horizon's leveled, you have to make sure both ends are leveled. Also, I'm just prepping for a couple of shoots coming up. Um, I don't have any this week, but at the end of the month, I have a few lined up. So it's definitely gonna start getting a little hectic here, I think. Some of the shoots are a little overlapping. So it's literally going from one location and then the next day going to the next location. So it kind of seems to always happen like that. Um, I wish I could spread them out a little bit more, but you gotta take it whenever you can. So yeah, it's gonna start getting pretty busy, but just uh, going through and prepping some equipment. I had this charger kind of um, one of the sides stopped working. So I had to pick up a new charger and I got this um, like quad charger. So it has uh, four gold mount slots here. Um, so I've been pretty happy with it so far. After my Houston trip, I couldn't charge any more batteries because of this, this, this thing died. So I had to purchase this one and it's been good so far. It charges a little bit slower than obviously the two bay, but you know, you can charge four batteries and not have to worry about changing them out. So I've had a bunch of these uh, black magic 2.5 K cameras. When they first came out, I purchased four of these units um, for like more like live stream multicam shoots. They had an SDI out, uh, clean feed, and they were great. Honestly, the image quality was super nice. Uh, super 35 sensor. They had um, Canon EF mount. I still have four of them, but I don't use them that much anymore. Maybe every once in a while. Uh, but they have good colors. Um, they play really nice with Blackmagic switchers and any other switcher. And the, the best part about them is the media. I don't know why more cameras don't do this, but it's literally just like an SSD just slides in there and records. And, you know, it can be like a dirt cheap SSD and you'll have like eight hours of record time. Uh, ProRes, ProRes, uh, I think it goes up to... HQ or something like that. Um, oh my gosh, it still turns on. <laughs> I haven't used these cameras in months, so I'm surprised there's any battery left at all.
but let's see. I think it goes up to, right now it's on LTT. Oh, it died, Never mind. But yeah, I never really used the internal recording for them anyways. I used mostly the line cut from a switcher but I would always record to the cameras because I, I like having redundant backups and whatnot. This is what it looks like when it's all packed up in the Pelican case. Got some foam in there, so it's pretty well protected. Tripods, head, NPF batteries. So yeah, I like how it all fits nicely into one case.